Hello. Okay. Oh, hello. Hello. All right. I'm doing. Oh, wait. No, I'm not. Um, hello, We She. Hello, Gabriella. Hello, Vivian. Hello. Okay. That's three. That's 4D visual. No, 3D visual. Now 2D visual. Hello, Stephanie. Hello, Michaela. Hello, Jalen. Hello, Alyssa. Hello, connecting to audio. Hello, connecting to audio. Hello, Catherine with a Y. Um, Okay, now I'm going to go back to verbal. Hold on. I'm just, I'm, uh, good afternoon, Charlie. That was very fun. Hello. Yes. Hello and good afternoon. And indeed, long time no see, we, she, um, but this is no time for time as my, you know, my younger brother forever when he was little, and actually my older son, I'm a poet and I'm not aware of the fact, but okay. Um, hello, Gabriella. I can't accept. Oh, you're. See, it looks like Gabrielle is giving me a compliment, but really what she's really talking about is the peace of mind that Professor Walters always ends up taking in the end. Checkmate. Okay. Yep. She's just poking about how bad a chess I am. Okay. Good afternoon, Vivian. Hi, Stephanie. Good afternoon, Alyssa. Good afternoon, Jalen with an A-E. Hello, Michaela with an A-Y. Good afternoon, Andrew with a VA. Uh, hello. Um, Nicholas must be talking to somebody else because I know he has such complex feelings about me. Um, uh, hello. And by complex, I mean, hello, Shagupta. And good afternoon. And whoa, I don't even understand. Okay, see, Nick, what did I say? Nicholas, complex individual. Minute to learn, lifetime to master. Um, Good afternoon, Jayla with a Y. Good afternoon, Rachel and everyone with a CH. Okay. Um, yeah. No, oh, and there's more people waiting. Sorry. This is a big class. I just forget that until I see you in lab. Hold on. Okay. Um, it's really been a very long time. Yeah. Oh, did I miss someone? Wait, did I miss? Oh, I did miss the connecting to audio people. Like, hello, Nicholas, Rachel, Andrew, Catherine, and Lakshmi, and Charlie, the connecting to, oh, and there's more people coming. Okay, maybe we could just do this. Because Lauren knows I don't have any physics to say. No, that's not true. Um, okay, wait, I think that's already, okay, okay. So it's been a very long time. Um, we all needed a break. My break got extended in a way as you see i'm truly all right so first of all I, one thing i have to and i have missed you guys and i totally was going to see you yesterday i i guess you gathered <coughs> excuse me <coughs> i totally failed um uh a lot this week and last week um um and of course oh, hang on one second i'm sorry well yes um and i am uh, here to consider it failure. Um, one thing I noticed, you guys are amazing. Um, I do. I noticed that even though you got the notice, you got very short notice that class was canceled on Monday. Oh, oh, I want to hear about that. Actually, we will take a moment to hear. But I, I, I thank you. I do want. We are going to talk about that, like, like substantively and non-substantively. Um, yeah. Give me one second. I do want to hear about lab. Um, um. I just want to thanks and apologies out of the way since it has been so long. Um, yeah, I gathered um, private chat. Per, yes, I um, yes. For years, I've been wanting to fix that Vandy graph generator, and now I'm not so sure I want to fix it anymore. Um, and all it needs is a belt. It's like totally pathetic. It's like it, it wouldn't be a big repair anyway. But uh, uh, okay, wait. So so to get on to physics. I just want to acknowledge as usual, I mean, I want it to be clear, like that you, my failures are mine, not yours and your successes are, are increasing and definitely noticed by me. Um, like you had very short notice that this class was canceled on Monday and it was, um, but you, most of you acknowledge that notice like really fast. I'm very impressed how like you're great communicators. And then today, like two minutes before class, I was just confirming that we did have class and confirming the bad news that I am ashamed of and I am um, and don't feel good about that. I still don't have your exams. And that is a fact that is an unfortunate, that is a bad fact that is totally on me and has happened before. As some of you know, it is not 
a part of me that I'm proud of these days. Um, it is true that I don't have your exams. I'm just saying that as many times as I can just to <laughs> at least be clear about it. Um, and it says nothing to, it actually is, if it's a reflection on you at all, it's just that in fact, you guys really did step up and give me very thorough, deep exams. You did for the most part, which I really am happy about. I am taking longer to deal with them than I want to, or than you want me to. I can tell you from past experience that the longer this is taking, the more it is a credit to you and the more it means for a thousand reasons that it will work out in the end. No one's going to be suddenly surprised in the last minute with really bad news. I mean, you might, I mean, there are a lot of things that are happening in the last minute in this course, but I promise you, I'm aware of that the longer things take, the less fair it is for it to be really bad news that you can't do anything about. Believe that I'll just, that's all I'll say about that in the moment, but I get that and I know that that so i'm sorry these are taking so long that it is partly that you really did um yeah i mean i can't give you all hundreds but but i will say that a lot of you it's clear that a lot of you are doing a lot of work that really will be credited very very i think i i'm not here to give grades i'm here to eventually record them but i can predict that the recordings will be very very much in your favor and because you deserve them not because of any any weirdness honestly uh but i do apologize that it's taking so long um with them it's hard to face you with that fact i'm amazed i tried to but i said it in the little announcement right before class and i'm amazed how many of you got back that announcement so fast like believe me i noticed and then i tried to get that back to you to keep com a communication alive just to be clear what i'm talking about the little the little postings that say like class is canceled or or in today's case that class is on and that i don't have your exams like you get points for those. And I want you to know, technically they're supposed to be due right before the relevant moment. But in today's case, when I just sent you something that, like five minutes before class to say that, I am amazed that like three quarters of you already turned it back. But I just want to make it clear to the rest of you, you could still turn it back by midnight tonight, even though we're here we are in the middle of class and you'll totally get the points for it. If nothing else, it's like, it's partly just a concession and acknowledgement that I know it's torturous not for you to have your exams back. So please just look look out for those little postings. Like they're not, it's not too late to get anyway. And so, and it's because, and all those points in the end, of course, help those of you who may be in the end, if it turns out you didn't do perfectly on the exam, it won't, it won't ruin your future as much as it might feel that way right now. Okay. But yes, look, I also agree with Rachel and Nicholas that all hundreds are nice. And look, part of the trick of all these tricks of all these extra points and everything is, uh, as I've said a million times, I'm perfectly happy for all of you to end up getting hundreds, as long as it's because you actually got them, not because I just um, gifted them to you. And there is a way for all of you to get them if you do all these point things and all that stuff. So please do, like, you get it. We all get it. Like, uh, we'll all be happy if we all walk away from this course with happiness, believe me. Uh, but yes, I. so it's been a weird week. Um, everybody in my family is sick. I my, I missed my flight yesterday or two nights ago, so I didn't even get to you, you say hello to you guys on Tuesday. I, but we have we have still some time to finish some curriculum. I still, if nothing else, I'm going to say this. Now we're going to transition. In fact, here comes the transition. I still think every time I look all frustrated and spazzy like this, it's over my failures, not yours. I still think. You guys are doing what you're supposed to do. And I think you've been very engaged in this material. Why am I saying that? Not just to give you an empty compliment, um, uh, although nothing wrong with empty compliments, right? But no, but, but, to, but to say the one, no matter whatever happens with the delayed grades and this and that is, I hope it's clear. I still love this material. I mean, I love you guys and I love the material that I'm trying to share with you. And we, and the ultimate point of the material of this course, which we are about to get back to right now and spend the rest of a few weeks that we have on is there are things in this world that matter that are not matter. I mean, that's like the summary of this whole freaking, and I'm saying that as a scientist, right? If I have no other message to give with this physics 204 curriculum, it is that one. This is the science and the math of those super important, measurable, predictable, analyzable entities in the universe that are non-material. Take that in any direction you want for the rest of your life, but, but take it, please. 
And so the, for the rest of this course, I want to like, I want to drum in that point, like even in even more detail and more application. Um, the example on the table right now of immaterial things that are real, or in other words, the example on the table right now in the curriculum of motion that is not trajectories of particles, which is physics 203, but rather propagation or flow of information, right? Like that's what we're all about now. It's like the more scientific way of saying it, like, you know, the more scientific way of saying what we're studying here is we're studying information flow, propagation of quantity rather than trajectory of massive or discrete or countable or identifiable particles, right? And so the example on the table right now in the course or, or the topic on the table right now in the course is electrostatic fields. That's what I want to deal with more today in lecture, but, uh, but electrostatic fields as, and we just started that right before vacation. Believe me, I know we just started right before vacation. So I'm not assuming that you have a total, you know, developed sense of them yet. But what we're here to discuss in lecture is electrostatic fields, particularly how they relate to electric current and electrostatic potential, i.e. voltage, i.e. the stuff that you're doing in lab. That said, okay, so that was like a mouthful, sort of, that was like almost substantive, like while you were you know, where you turn the other way and suddenly I'm talking about physics. Sorry, I know, jarring transition. But what I'm trying to say is I want to get back to, in the lecture here, I want to get back to the concepts of electrostatic field. And I want to show you how electrostatic field comes from force, but ultimately relates us to such abstractions as voltage and current. And IE, I want to try to show you how this like math or this stuff in the lecture relates to what supposedly, well, what you are in fact working with in the lab. Now that's a cheesy way of me saying like, watch out, here comes the equations and here comes the math today. But yes, first <laughs> you can do your best to distract me if you want, or, or uh, yeah, distract me. I do want to take a moment or I want, I want to offer you a moment to catch me up with what exactly is going on in lab or what, whatever it is Rachel was alluding to or whatever uh, and Gabriella was alluding to, like, like my impression, and I was gonna visit you yesterday, but then I totally did not visit New York yesterday. Um, um, my understanding or my impression is that you're dealing with circuits in the lab. And I know that's a huge, that's like all of a sudden like, whoa, it seems like it has nothing to do with anything you've ever done in the lab or lecture before. I'm here to tie it all together or attempt. But I'm happy to shut up. Like I will shut up now and hear whatever you want to tell me about whatever's going on in lab, either like on a totally serious level, like exactly what you're dealing or what to do. But also, if you want to share an anecdote or a whatever, feel free. Okay, I'm shutting up. I'm looking at the chat. I am. I am even maybe going to put on my glasses in a minute so I can hear better. Hold on, I'm looking at a chat. Okay, yeah, you do. Okay, cool, cool. Oh, I and it's so funny. See, I love you guys. Like. What do I get? I totally get a completely substantive, totally curricular response from Rachel, the person that I was thinking was going to say something absolutely outrageous about some outrageous thing that actually happened. Okay, right. Light bulbs in the circuits. Good. That's what I, good. Okay. You learn about the relationship between IR and V. Oh, great, Jayla. That's actually super helpful. Good. Um, and I know that, and we can, we're here. I'm happy. You can even tell me what you did or did not understand if you want. I'm here to sort of unpack it, but that's great. That's great. And started actually. Yes, you started. Charlie's a down. Okay, that's funny. I I assume we mean Zapa. Learn that V. Oh, thank you, Syed. Okay, well, that's totally helpful. Okay, this is a good chat. This is almost feels like a class for people that should be all full of hate. They're still full of help. Hey, wait, hey, no, no. I just meant, wait, I just meant because you're the one, Rachel, that said, uh, yeah, you said the lab was definitely something yesterday. So I thought that meant there was like drama or like you were going to tell me and then, you know, whatever, uh, you know, someone was pregnant with triplets and but then like went to Guam in the middle and are, and are continuing. I don't know. Um, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, Rachel. Um, 
So, but, but I do apologize, Rachel, if that's if that haze to me. Wait, wait. I may have, sorry, okay. I may have just spit on my own computer. Um, I did not expect what Charlie's saying. This would be so much fun if we didn't have to do anything, wouldn't it? Oh, wait, that's what happens every time. I may have yelled for like 10 minutes straight and left. Wait, um, wait, okay, okay. Now you're, okay. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, so learn a little too. Okay, wait, so now this is the second. All right, I've got Rachel and Stephanie making these very like, uh, okay, maybe I'm, I must be sending mixed signals. I do that because both Rachel and Stephanie Crespo are like saying these totally like spoiler alert kind of things to me like, oh yeah, Vermont, don't even get us started on that. But like, I don't, and then try, okay. It got, oh, 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 wow. Okay, okay, I see. All right, so I'm totally, this is actually very helpful. And I know, you know, this is exactly the kind of class that for some of us, this might seem like totally not a class, but to some of us, this is exactly the class we need. So bear with me, I'm totally reading this chat. Okay, Charlie, I appreciate your honest admission, Charlie, you were flustered. Charlie talks about resistance. Forget it. Oh, that's funny. Okay, that's funny. Right. Okay. <clears throat> I wore a cloth. <laughs> okay. I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm getting with, okay, look, no, this is actually really helpful. And you can keep this coming as usual class physics to first of all, you know, if we, if we weren't for COVID and all this thing, you realize you are the kind of class that years ago we made, we had a physics, um, uh, we had a physics that was higher than 204. We had another, we had physics 382 that was like invented as a place for people to go like you because there were so, so many, because I wanted to see people again and they wanted to see it again. And we, we I, I need to invent that again before you graduate because I'm going to be very sad when you all uh, actually move on in your lives. Uh, no, because you are telling me this is hilarious. I mean, and I hope everybody's actually emotionally okay. Like, like I, um, but well, I'm sure you do. Look, of course you scare Johnson. You scare me. How can and you scare me at a distance? You're like gravity and reverse. You're like the electro. I mean, I'm literally scared at a distance, and I've been teaching longer than you're alive. So of course you scare. I mean, I hope I think you scare each other actually. Um, no, but you scare me to get look. Also, my seven look every pieces of wood scare me too. So I suppose that's not. Um, but but wait. Um, maybe not wood, but plastic. Uh, okay. So so wait. All right. I'm still rolling with this. I do see there was drama. I do see that you are hilarious as usual, but I'm also reading, I, and I will say one of the reasons I did want, I mean, today's, the purpose of today is for me to link the lecture curriculum to the lab curriculum and to try to try to start to clarify some issues that you're dealing with in the lab, because this, oh, just so you know, this is the case every semester. I mean, no, this is never the case. I mean, no, you're a fresh, unique take on all this, but what is the case every semester, folks, is that the minute we introduce circuits in the lab, it is like a major left turn to everybody. To some people, it's a relief because it's like so new. If some people, it's like, oh, thank God, we're finally doing something that looks like science or feels like science or something like that, right? Or thank God, finally, now there's a light bulb that goes on. So I at least know what I'm doing. Like there's feedback. For some people, it's a major, major relief and really is a type of physics that you know is kind of like maybe what some of us first signed up for when we wanted to become scientists but for many of the rest of us it's like wait what where what does this have to do with anything and where all why all of a sudden do i have to make things work and like what are even if i vaguely understand these new concepts that are out of nowhere like what do they have to do with this damn breadboard excuse my language i shouldn't say bread um so, so for sure, and, and believe me, I'm, you know, it's not just your class and it's also in other curriculum. I'm dealing with a lot of professors now and a lot of trying to manage to like, whoa, V, I, R, breadboard, ammeter, like it's a lot all of a sudden. So I am here to try to informally, at least for half of this period, just want you to know, even though, even though we're joking around and stuff, my goal is to have a sort of informal exchange with you guys a welcome back informal exchange where I can try to answer some of the questions or difficulties that you've been having in lab. Um, 
and and I can't because I think you will be on. I, I, I okay, correct me. If, I'll look back in the chat in a second. This is a conversation now for the and for those of you who want to run, this will be a conversation for a couple of minutes. I'm going to try to answer informal questions, or I mean, I'm going to try to answer questions informally. Um, and I will look back in the chat in a moment. One thing that it would be helpful for me to know, like. Okay, I assumed that you went to electricity yesterday. Sounds like that's correct. I assumed it was the first time you were dealing with electricity, at least in this class in the lab. Tell me if that's wrong. I mean, maybe it was the second. Maybe you could tell me in the chat if it was the first or the second. I can't remember. Either way, I still want to help. Number, But number three, I am assuming, because the semester is not quite over yet, that this will be helpful that I'm assuming that you will have something due for Johnson that will involve grades, like either a lab report or something, and or you're going to have at least one more activity with him on circuits. Like I'm assuming all of circuits are not now over. If they're totally over and you're never looking at them again with him or never turning in a report or anything, you should probably let me know that because then I don't want to waste too much of your time today trying to clean up too much if it's never going to be relevant for the rest of the class for you. So I'm looking in the... Oh yeah, no, I would... I mean, I'd be scared of Gabriella and electrocution also, but um, that was, okay, I'm sure that was, look, this whole thing, you're, all of our, all of this is out of context, but wait, so can you just let me know in the chat, am I, is it, is it your impression that you're eager having, you just started them yesterday, okay, thank you, Charlie, okay, see, the guy's totally regrouped, he had a meltdown yesterday, and now he's like rebuilt, he's like the phoenix out of the ashes, um, so you just started them yesterday. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that means you're not done with, yeah, so then you're not done with them. So this will be somewhat useful, I think. If, um, um, so you, you, is this correct? In lab, you, A, sort of learned about V and I and R in a way from Johnson. And again, that's what I want to go back to in the lecture material when I get back. I'll try to give my, I'll try to connect those things to what we're doing in class. But you learned VIR from Johnson, and you attempted to make some simple circuits that made light bulbs light. And you had some ultimate success, but some frustration doing that. Not so simple circuits. Oh, that's fair. Oh, and okay. Do you want to be more? And that's where, you, so you got, in all, all joking aside, Charlie, you, you perhaps you, you had a moment of frustration with the actual material, with actually doing it. Like something broke that we, we all did. Okay, no, that's fair. And let's keep this going for a minute. I honestly, I'm asking. I'm not, I, I am sympathetic and it wouldn't be the first time. And I am sorry, you, for real. Okay, okay, no, this is good to know. Okay, again, you're not alone. It is a big, it's at an, it, it, it can be very frustrating, especially because it's very labby, right? And you're not used to that in physics in that like things either work or they don't. And so it's very like when it doesn't work, which is most of the time, I, I totally relate. It gets, and it doesn't seem like it should be hard, but it is hard. It, let me say this, circuits are deceptively hard. Like once you get used to them, like anything, they get easier, but they seem like they should be a lot easier than they actually are, I, I'm sure. All right, so, okay, I was killing in the beginning. Got, oh, okay, Charlie, said, this is helpful. But this is what I, I do want. We are in, this is the right thing to be doing is to sort of share these war stories. And ultimately my goal here, I want to hear these war stories or hear exactly what went wrong. But anybody at any moment, and I'm about to read the chat again from where Charlie just, you know, gave his story. But anywhere that anybody can put in anything that in fact still might be unclear to them that I could clear them now would be great. This would be a good use of time. If any, for example, if you're like, I still don't get how the columns and the rows work in the breadboard or like every time I blah, it, like I'm happy. I, this is the time for me to answer questions like that. But let me, okay, I'm gonna start reading from where Charlie just, okay, okay, Nicholas had to step out for a while. The breadboards, yeah, the breadboards, I'm totally happy to, okay, I was killing. Okay. Oh, okay, that's fair. When you have to add the voltmeter, I couldn't get it to work. Do we have the mail? Yeah, there is something. Yeah, there's a whole bag of wires that are totally missing. I am aware of that. And they just went missing in the middle of the semester. It, it, it's like actually really bizarre and suspicious. And if they, I mean, if they were heroin, I would totally not be, no, that's a stupid thing to say. But yeah, there's a whole bag of wires 
missing. And that is annoying, definitely. Um, <laughs> I don't even know. He was pulling an 84. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, the day of, uh, oh, that's next. The day the, that's next Monday or next that's next Tuesday that's a week from Tuesday. Uh, sadly, it's not a day off. I mean, to answer just side note on Shagupta's question, totally legitimate question. I can't remember if that's Monday or Tuesday. If it, it's not okay, sadly, and this all gets tricky. It's not a day off at John Jay, as far as I know. Well, look, I'm not even going to make jokes about that. Okay, to to either of you, to anybody, uh, like. That is a serious topic. I can't make jokes about it. I mean, I, I don't want to make jokes about it. It's a legitimate issue. Here's the best thing I can say. Um, I, if it's Tuesday, because I was reading about this recently. If it is Tuesday that you're talking about, which I think you are, then no, the college is not off. But if you have a religious observance, don't like just talk to me. Just, if you have a religious observance, don't come to class and just let me know in advance and we will work it out. I, I can't tell you, I am serious about that to all of you, to any of you. Everybody has different religions and cultures and all that. And I am, I, I, that is an issue. And it's one that's a little bit closer to my heart. That's like, I'm, I'm in a little bit of a better position to know how to navigate that issue than some other issues that are also complicated, okay? Um, yeah, no, that, that is seriously true. And this is not, I appreciate that Shagupta has the guts to raise this publicly. This is not, and this is to Shagupta, but it's not just to Shagupta. It, and of course, it's late in the semester for me to be saying this. But yes, if you have a religious observance, sure, if you feel comfortable telling Johnson and telling your group and you're working out that way, fine. And, and Johnson knows my feelings on this. But if there's any doubt in your mind or any discomfort or anything, just write to me and we'll make it okay. I mean, I'm serious to all of you. And it, you know, it's a similar thing to what I said about the exam stuff like that. Like, that's all I could say about that. I mean, I, I, and look, I, yeah, that's, I, I, I can't even make jokes about that because I do take it seriously. Um, and I, and also none of us, and I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole right now, but like, um, okay, sorry, um, sorry, hold on one second, um, like it's been so many weeks since I've seen you guys. I know that the last time. I believe the last time you had live was that crazy day. I know there's still issues and fallout from, um, I know there's still fallout from that crazy day like three weeks ago. And that too, I'm happy to talk with any of you about individually and in an ongoing way. I don't think the day is over just because that day was over. I understand that. And I just, again, we're almost toward the end of the semester, but I know nothing is over until you get your grades or until you feel it's over. Please just know, everybody, on a serious level, the thing I've been trying to maintain all along is that everybody has different personal, individual um, uh, stations in life and responses to situations. And some people were literally there that crazy day, two weeks. I know that. And some people weren't there, but were affected in different ways. All you ever, and I never want to be in a position where someone has to personally prove to me or to an institution that their personal situation is like legitimately catastrophic. That is not my business to assess. All anybody has to do is have the guts to say to me, there's a situation in my life. Can we like acknowledge it? And hopefully you guys trust. And that's what I do to you guys. Every time I say, I don't have your exams graded or something. I'm basically saying, can you just have compassion on me? And like, just recognize that I see you and you see me and we're going to deal with this as best as possible. That's all any of you has to say to me about a religious observance or a, 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 like a, an urban tragedy or so. seriously. Okay, I'm going to move on in a minute, but I just wanted again to be, yes, I don't think, so just because the college, I think you all get what I'm saying. Just if there's ever any doubt, just please come to me. And if, if you want to text rather than email, so it's like not, you know, so it's more informal, it's totally fine. Um, like I have a family too. I have a God too. Like seriously, like, like I know, but okay. Uh, I'm going to shut up for a second and go back to, um, okay. Um, I don't, actually I'm going to say one last thing on this. Cause it does get it, it, like, like I just, I also want you to know how do I 
we're going to go back, we're going to go back to the lab discussion in one second. But I think many of you've already picked up on this hint for me over the last two semesters. Reconciling academic obligations or work or stuff with life is a tricky business for us all, especially in COVID and all of that. But I want you to know one of the ways that I can ever do it, and I don't always do it, I happen to love my work. That helps. I don't always love it, and it's not always easy. But I actually love what I do, and I love what I think about, which is physics, right? Like that, and I love you guys. Like <laughs> I do. Um, that all helps. But make no mistake, I don't have any difficulty at all reconciling science and the study of science with a, with a belief in or a concern for, um, shall we say, the deeper. Uh, uh, I'm getting too honest. All I have to say is it's not a coincidence that I keep saying in Physics 204 that what we're trying to study here is the math and the science of immaterial world, okay? Like science is not just about machines and about technology and about or whatever. And it's not just about building a better widget. Not at all. If that's what it were about, maybe it is about that for a lot of people, but not for me. And that's not what keeps me in science. For me, what keeps me in science is a continuous avenue and a super rigorous, like, like functional, successful, everly fascinating, ever humbling avenue toward the things in reality that are really, really real, but do not meet the eye. And if that ultimately translates to certain holidays, for example, where it turns out to be more important to actually go directly to those sources rather than through a class or through a grade, I'm all for it, if that makes any sense. I'm being sort of euphemistic, but um, it, it's all about what doesn't meet the eye as far as I'm concerned. So no one ever has to justify that to me. Okay, that said, back to, um, uh, back to the circuit boards. Do did you feel, I'm gonna, okay, back to, is there any question that, I, I'm totally sympathetic to the frustration of the, but it sounds like you also sort of made progress. Did any, did people ultimately get their light bulbs to light? Let me ask that. Like put in the chat, like did the light bulbs ultimately? Yeah, oh yeah, wow. Oh, that's a lot of yeses. Wow, you guys are so fast. Wow, you're still listening to me after all, my total digression. Um. Wow, Um. that's awesome, okay. Does that mean you feel that at this point, well, all right, I'm gonna be even more direct. I'm gonna take the Charlie breakdown. Since we've never heard of a Charlie breakdown before. Um, oh, wait. Oh, and you even got them to work in the parallel circuit? You even, you even, even the parallel, you got it? Or many of you? Yeah, oh, great. And in the bread, okay, after, okay. So there, it sounds like, so it sounds like there was a, a lot of frustration, but you eventually got somewhere. If I'm tracking this right, it sounds like still something that was confusing was how to use the voltmeter. It, it sounds like that may maybe never got resolved, but um, but you actually, so even the Charlie breakdown, if I may, eventually like got resolved, like even what Charlie was frustrated about somehow got figured out. Is that what we're actually saying? It was in, okay, okay. Sounds like Johnson really does know how to manage his time, actually. Okay, um, so I still wanna teach what I'm gonna teach, but then is it, so it, is it, I'm gonna give you two more minutes to just think about this. Is there any question that anybody could put in the chat right now, like anything from that period that continued to seem unresolved or confusing? that you could put in the chat now that maybe I could shed some, like, and this is an honest question. Is there anything I could help with right now like that might put you in a stronger position for, and I don't mean about the theory, like I'll do the theory here, but I mean about like the functioning of the breadboard or, or the functioning of the voltmeter. In fact, I have a question for you. When you say, at least one of you said you had trouble with the voltmeter, which kind of meters were you using? Were you using the analog simple meters that like, there's two, there's voltmeters that just are a little dial that just say V on them that just has a needle. That's one kind of voltmeter. But then there's these digital multimeters, 
uh, oh, oh, okay, the brand, not digital. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, I think that was a good choice. I mean, I'm glad. Um, and I'm, and I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna take Lakshmi's question really seriously now, especially because it's Lakshmi. Um, uh, um, I'm gonna say something about the breadboard. I'm gonna try, and you guys help me say it either more efficiently or more or more thoroughly, depending on what you want. I'm gonna, until I hear, unless someone specifically tells me in the chat, I'm gonna assume that you did get the voltmeter thing worked out, I, I, unless you tell me otherwise. But okay, the breadboard thing. Yeah, the breadboard, you did. Okay, great, great, great. Thank you, Lakshmi. Okay, ancient, yes. Um, the bread. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, good. So maybe, and so stop me. I mean, I'm going to say a word or two about the breadboard right now, but definitely, I mean, you guys were there, not me. So like you could chime in or Charlie could chime in and be like, no, that's not what she's confused about. Yeah, but I'm like, that's not her issue. This is her, whatever. The thing with the breadboard, which gets in everybody's way at first, at first, if your circuits are simple enough, the breadboard is particularly confusing. It's almost like a dummy variable in math. It seems really confusing at first because it seems to just be this, extra hassle that doesn't seem to make that just seems to make things more complicated unnecessarily um so it's sort of like so the motivation to use it see oh, oh sorry okay i have to be quieter okay seems hold on one second sorry sorry uh, did i mention my son is sick um um the breadboard is hard to understand partly because it seems not worth it at first. First of all, I'll just say that the breadboard becomes more and more worth it the more complicated your circuits get. A, like it's it's questionably worth it when your circuits are super simple, like to be fair. But second of all, the, the real purpose of the breadboard, I'm gonna try to, I know not everybody's confused about it, but I'm trying to say this to everybody. The real purpose of the breadboard is even if you're dealing with somewhat simple circuits, if you're playing with circuits as you guys are, if you're trying different things out, if, if you're doing trial and error, um, and like if you don't know in advance exactly what the perfect circuit is, or you know there's a possibility you're gonna make mistakes or change your mind, the purpose of the breadboard is to allow you to stick wires in and take them out at will Without ha see, if you didn't have a breadboard, even a really simple circuit, if you hooked up like light bulb to battery to resistor and you know just in a loop, and it was if anything went wrong and you decided even like oh I'm going to substitute a stronger light bulb or I'm going to substitute in a weaker resistor or something, if you didn't have a breadboard, even if you knew exactly what you were doing, then every time you wanted, um, if you didn't have a breadboard. Uh, um, unless you had a lot of perfect clips, you would end up having to solder wires together, melt wires together, and then break them apart every time you want to make a change. Some of that is reduced with all those clips that you have, but as you saw, the clips are kind of a pain in the butt as well, and, and we're missing certain alligator clip ends. So after a while, putting wires together and taking them apart becomes a big hassle without a breadboard. The breadboard is meant, once you get it, to be an easy way to put things in and take them out without having to clip too much or glue too much or solder too much. Okay, so that's like the purpose of it. But now here's the deal with it to say, again, I'll say, I know some of you get it and some of you don't, so bear with me, but the breadboard is just an organized, it's an organization scheme. There's no electricity ever like automatically running through the breadboard even though even those like three holes at the top of the bread those three knobs at the top of the breadboard like the two red and one black or two black and one red those things that look special at the top of the breadboard they're not special they're just little ports with metal in them and even the whole organization how there's like rows of dots at the top and then there's columns of dots in the middle and then rows of dots at the bottom this is an organization scheme but just to be clear to everybody there there's no battery in a breadboard there's no there's it's it's just a dead grid 
of crisscrossed little sheets of metal. Like, like underneath those holes are strips of metal. Just metal though. Like, like there's just like artificial flat wires connecting some holes to some holes and not connecting some holes to some holes. What I'm just trying to emphasize right now is nothing is ever automatically happening through or from a breadboard. It's just like sheets of aluminum foil being like being crisscrossed together into a sort of grid. Um, so it's never on or off. Now, the idea is, and again, bear with me if this, the idea behind the breadboard is if you just look in the, I know no one's holding one right now either. I mean, I wish I had one to hold up, but if you just look in the, in the main body of the breadboard, like the center grid, not, not the top rows and not the bottom rows, if you just look there, what you can't see, but what you can believe is that behind those holes are columns of metal. Like there's strips of metal that are going up and down, up and down, not going across, going up and down. Wait. Right. Okay. Yes. Really good question. Direct chat person. The breadboard is just a, as a, so the, someone in the direct chat just wrote, does it essentially act as a vessel to transfer electricity? And the ant, which is a great question. The answer is yes. It, not just essentially, exactly. And only all the breadboard is, it is a vessel to transfer electricity. It can't produce it and it can't stop it. It's just to transfer it. Yes. So what it is, it's just a big um, tapestry, not that what's a grid of little wires. It's just a bunch of wires that are already there. So that's right. But the idea is that since at least in the, the wires are organized in a certain way to make your life ultimately easy, one, easier once you understand it. In the center of the breadboard, all the wires, but like you just see a bunch of holes, right? And the holes are like, there's rows and columns of the holes. What you don't know unless you know is that behind those holes are metal strips that are just going along the columns. They're not going along the rows, they're just going along the columns. So the whole idea, the whole idea is if I had like a light bulb here in my hand and I have this like resistor over here, I wanna connect these two things together, the resistor and the light bulb, but I don't wanna have to melt them together because that's a big pain and it, it is a big pain. It takes a long time. And then if I make a mistake, then I have to break them apart anyway. And I don't have clips or any of the clips become a big pain. So I want to hook this resistor to this light bulb. What I can totally, and assuming that their other ends are going to be hooked to a battery or something, I want to hook them together. What the breadboard allows me to do is say, okay, here's, here's how I can use the breadboard to hook them together exactly the way I want. I can put one end of the light bulb in one, any hole I want in that breadboard. And then I, so I take one end of it and maybe the other end is now hooked to the battery or something or hooked to some other part of the breadboard that goes to the battery. But I put one end in into one hole of the breadboard. Then I take one end of the other device of say the resistor. I want this to be connected to that. So what I can do is put this one in a separate hole that is in the same column as that one. If I put, so I could have picked any column I want for this. It's totally up to me. It's just an organizational scheme that the breadboard is providing. I could put this in any hole I want, but then I look at the hole that it's in. It's in a certain column. If I put the, an end of my other device in a hole that's connected in the same column, they're now automatically both touching underneath the board. They're both touching a strip of metal. They're both fastened to the same wire in effect. So they are now electrically connected. If I put them in two different columns, or even if I put them in the same row, they're not electrically connected. But if I put them in the same column, they're automatically electrically connected. So the whole idea, so, and then say the other end of this resistor, now I want to be hooked to the battery. So what would I do? I would put it in a fresh, new, brand new column, any one I want, just as long as I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. I put in a hole in a brand new column, and then from that column, I have a new wire coming out that will attach back to the battery or the power supply, or maybe two alligator clips that attach to the battery, uh, to the power supply. Like the whole, now again, I'm saying this to everybody. I think it's really, I know, I, I know everybody's at different stages, but yeah, the whole principle behind this is that 
electricity flows through metal, it doesn't flow through non-metal. Um, so as long as two things are touching a piece of metal, then they are in effect electrically touching each other. Every time you want to connect a new device in a circuit through the breadboard, you, oh, you start, you pick a hole in a new column. I'm gonna go one step and maybe the direct chat person, maybe tell me if I'm sort of answering your question. Um, I'm gonna go one step further now in answering this question. I'm gonna say something that I think maybe will help everybody. Even if you think you get, if you, even if you're like in the room, you're like, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't get that. At, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool, cool. Now for all of you, and I think this is, it, this took me a long time and ideally, you'd all understand the breadboard better if ideally we'd started our whole lecture by just show, if we ripped open a breadboard and showed you the back and some year, I should do that some year. I we just, I never think to do it until it's too late. But if you saw the, if you saw the insides of a breadboard, you, you'd be faster to understand this. Um, and if you just recognize like this is all, it's a scheme to help. It's not, it's to help you navigate trial and error and complexity. It's not literally an electrical device. It's an organizational scheme for electrical devices. But I think, okay, so if most of you sort of did pick up on that by the end of the period, I'm gonna go a step further now and say something maybe occurred to you, maybe you didn't. Like, like anything else, you have to start getting used to how to navigate the breadboard. There's lots of choices you can make at any moment. There's like, for any given way to do something, I mean, any given thing you're trying to accomplish with a circuit, there's countless correct ways to do it. Once you understand the breadboard, you'll see, you know, what's intimidating at first is there's not just one right way to do things. There's countless right ways to do things, but there's even more countless wrong ways to do it, right? Like that's the art of the science. So one rule of thumb, I'm gonna say, since you did a little bit of series and you did a little bit of parallel, right? Series. Series in parallel are super fundamental. They are not just, they, 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 it can seem like there's series circuits and there's parallel circuits. And then it just seems like, oh, two different types of circuits. Are there tons of other types of circuits too? Are we just learning two out of a dozen? Like, is this just tip of the, no, 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 no. It's not that there are series circuits and there's parallel circuits. Series in parallel are the two and, and only two different ways forever arranging any two devices in a circuit. See, a big circuit, once it's complicated enough, can have series parts and can have parallel parts. A whole circuit is not just a series circuit or a parallel circuit. Series and parallel are the two different and the only two different options for how to arrange one device with another i.e. one light bulb with a resistor or one light bulb with a battery or one resistor with another resistor or whatever, whenever there's gonna be two devices. And so most real circuits have tons and tons of devices in them. But, but what series and parallel really, really mean, and again, I'll get, I hope this is, the, the reason that they're there, the only two options is what they really mean is no choice or choice. Like literally when we say that two devices are in series, and that's what we say. We say two devices are in series. Like this resistor is in series with that resistor. If we say that, what we mean is no matter how exactly you geometrically put them into your board, and there's an infinite number of ways you could, no matter how exactly you drew it on your piece of paper, no matter exactly, it doesn't matter whether one's to the left or one's to the right or one's up and one's down, no matter how you did it, if two resistors are in series, what we mean is that every single charge that came out of one resistor has no choice but to go through the into, into the other resistor. Like if I say that resistor number one is in series with resistor number two, what I literally mean is that everything that comes out, every bit of current, every bit of electrical charge, which will bring us back to theory in a moment. If I say that they're in series, I mean every bit of charge that exits resistor one has no choice but to enter resistor two. And charge is a real thing. A charge is a thingy thing. A bit of charge, we said this like three weeks ago, when you picture a bit of charge, picture a little electron or 
or if that's confusing, if you want to picture a proton, picture a pro or if you don't like that, picture like the absence of an electron. But uh, but really, a charge is an electron, okay? And we are saying that that charge is accounted for. Charge does not just uh, spontaneously appear or disappear. So if two resistors or two items of any kind, or even two pathways are in series, we mean that everything that goes through one must go through the other. That's series. Parallel means choice. Parallel sounds like it means parallel lines or something like Euclidean like that. It doesn't have to be Euclidean at all, parallel. When we, but, and parallel doesn't have to describe the whole circuit or anything. What parallel means, if we, it, it refers to an arrangement of two devices. If we say that two resistors are in parallel, what we mean is that, is that it's is that it's a fork in the road and it's a symmetric fork in the road like the, the two resistors might be different strengths and one path might ultimately be more sort of appealing or favorable than the other but literally parallel means two possible paths two two options a fork in a road and what it literally literally means if we say that resistor one is in parallel with resistor two or or excuse me i don't even remember if you used resistors or not but or light bulb one is in parallel with light bulb two what it means is that all the current is coming along that we can we can trace we can with our finger with our mind with the board we can trace back to a point where all the current was together coming along and then reached a junction literally a junction of some kind where for every single bit of charge, for every single bit of charge, it is the case that the charge will either go through resist, enter resistor one, uh, light bulb one, or will enter light bulb two, but not both and not neither. Like it's literally an exclusive or, so to speak, like an exclusive choice. That's what parallel means. And then every single charge after, so, so some of the charges will go through one, some will go through the other that might not be an equal number like we get to that or maybe you already got to that it might not be an equal number but every single charge will be accounted for it'll either go through one or it'll go through the other and then after this parallel configuration they will all be reunited somehow somewhere like more complexities could happen for sure but if it's a true parallel thing then eventually these two options will reunite and all the current will be accounted even if it's one moment before the battery it could be that extreme that they won't reunite until they get back to the battery but by the time they get back to the battery oh indeed all the current must reunite and that choice must all be accounted for so where am I going with this whole, okay, so first of all, let me just say, if it's not, I mean, this wasn't clear to me for years, series versus parallel are literally the two different possible ways to arrange two lines in a circuit or, or two devices in a circuit. You're either giving the charges no choice or you're giving them a choice. Like, and again, this is like logic, right? Like I, I, I can't even conceive of what there would be other than choice or no choice. So choice is called parallel, no choice is called series. And then how does this relate to the breadboard? And then I'll shut up for a second, but hopefully maybe this is sort of clarifying things, maybe. Um, and, and again, well, let me say again, this is just for any given moment in the circuit, like you could have 50 things that are in parallel with each other and, then in, and within each parallel branch, like 49 things that are in series. And then, like things can get very, very complicated. So it's. So uh, one big circuit can have all kinds of things going on, but when you're tracing around with your finger from the positive terminal of the battery, when, when, when you're like trying to imagine or check the path that you've sent electrons on from the one terminal of the battery to the other, you just walk around with your finger and, and no matter how it's geometrically arranged, you're just like, okay, no choice, no choice, oh, choice choice or choice oh no choice no choice oh choice choice oh reunite okay no like it's all about choices or no choices that's the whole thing that makes a circuit a circuit choices or no choices and um what was i just going to say oh so how this then translates to the breadboard is if you really think about it well I'll cut. one of the reasons the breadboard gets confusing i'm just going to go on a limb here and risk 
so at some point, probably a lot of you in the room did come to understand that at least in the center of the breadboard, the columns are electrically connected, the rows are not. Now, now again, a sidebar, that's the, at the top of the bottom of the breadboard, it's the opposite, you may have noticed. Like at the top, it's the rows that are connected and the bottom, like and it looks sort of geometrically different. At the top, it's the rows that are connected at the bottom and, and at the bottom. But in the main body of the breadboard, it's the columns that are connected. Now, okay, I'm gonna dwell on that sideboard for a second, on that sidebar for a second. What's that all about? That is, that's a convention. That's an organizational aesthetic choice that has been made by, it's like an industry standard that seems to work for a lot of people. The whole purpose of that is just that what people have a tendency to want to do is they'll take the wires from their power supply, from their battery, and they'll hook the wires first into those rows at the top or the bottom. And, um, and, and just visually people get, and they, and they call those rows at the top and at the bottom of the breadboard, they call them bus lines, like B-U-S. I don't know if Johnson said this or not, but they're called bus lines. And they're, as a convention, they're just a, sort of the way that you bus in the electricity from, from your power supply or from your battery. So people will conventionally like take a red wire from the red terminal of their power supply, the plus terminal, and they'll connect it to one of those rows at the top. And then they'll take another wire and connect from the row, like they'll put another wire somewhere in that row and connect into the main body of the breadboard and then start doing all their circuity stuff in the main body, like put their resistors and their light bulbs, whatever, in the main body, in the columns. Then when it's time to go back to the battery, what people will conventionally do is take a wire out of the main body, stick it into a bus line, maybe at the bottom of the whole breadboard. And then, and, and here's what I was saying before, they'll stick a wire into the bus line at the bottom. Now the bus line at the bottom is not actually special. It's not automatically powered or anything like that. It just looks different. It's just a row rather than a column. So then you have to stick another wire somewhere else in that row, you know, stick another wire in, in the same row, have it stick up clip alligator clips or whatever to it and hook that back to your power supply. In other words, what I'm saying, this is a bit of a sidebar. I'm saying the, the top and the bottom of the breadboard are organized as rows rather than columns as a way of helping people just keep things organized and clean. They'll sort of visually recognize that that's in effect, your top and bottom are like your battery lines. They're not actually your battery lines unless you actually hook them to your power supply. And so they're not automatically battery lines at all. Similarly, if you wanted to ignore that, you could absolutely take certain columns from the middle of your breadboard and hook those directly to your batteries. Like you could ignore the rows entirely and, and they would work. Like there's nothing actually, this goes back to the private chat questions that I was getting and also to originally to Lakshmi's original question, like, like all that's happening in that board is just wires being, uh, um, pre-organized for you so that you can visually organize your circuit in a way that makes sense. But it, it, it's just a suggestion, like at a convention. Um, there's nothing special happening in the rows other than that they're there visually separated so that you maybe can distinguish your battery from everything else. Okay, so that's, I don't know if that helps or not, but that's a sidebar. Now, what I wanna say to everybody, and then I, I know it's already 115. I, oh, oh, wait. <laughs> Okay, that's very nice. I mean, I'll take, I appreciate it, I guess. I mean, I'm gonna take that to mean that hopefully this is not a waste of your time, what I'm saying right now, I hope, because I know it is like abstract to hear this, but also, you know, this is an advantage. I get to say this, at, the ideal is that you struggle first and hear this after, for whatever it's worth. Like if I were there, I wouldn't be saying this till the end either. Like it, it, that is why it's, well, anyway, whatever, thank you. I, I'll take that to mean this is not totally wasting your time, I hope, I think. I would say, here's the thing that may really make a difference, to, especially if you're going back in the lab next week. If you're sort of following what I'm saying about columns and rows, then what that ultimately means, and if you're sort of following what I'm saying about series and parallel, if you're ever spot, if you're trying to make a circuit and then like you think you're doing it right, but it's not working and then, and then, and like, you know, and whatever, Look down at the columns, any column for things to be hooked up in series, there should be a maximum of two wires in any column. 
But oh, uh, this sorry, this is what I was going to say before. Once you know that the columns are electrically connected, what people have a tendency to do, and I'm not gonna, I'm not saying that Charlie did this. I don't know if anybody did the following, but a tempting mistake that people often will make at the beginning because it seems super reasonable. Since the columns are electrically connected, people will often take something like a resistor or a light bulb or some kind of device and they'll stick both of its ends into the same column. Like it seems almost reasonable to do that. It might even seem like we're telling you to do that. I am, again, I'm totally not saying that that's what happened to Charlie. I have no idea what happened to Charlie. Um, but, uh, um, but what I'm saying to everybody is that's actually what you never want to do. You don't ever want to take two ends of the same device and put them in the same column. What you always want to do is take one end of one device, put it in a column, and then another end of a different device, the device that you want to be connected, and put that end into the column. Sounds obvious when I'm saying it for sure, but it's easier said than done. What I'm then ultimately saying is when you're looking at your circuit to see if things are right or not, if, if, if there's two, exactly two wires in one column, like sticking out of one column, that means you've got two devices in series, right? If there's exactly two wires in the same column, two wires from different devices, that means those two devices are in series. It means everything that's coming out one wire from one device is automatically going through the metal and coming up the wire to the other device. It has nowhere else it could go. And, and we always assume it, electricity, if it can go somewhere, it will. If it can't, it won't, like, if that makes sense. So if you have literally two wires sticking out of a column, the electricity will come down one wire, like from the light bulb into the board, down the column of the board, up the wire of the other, and and now and enter the other device. So two wires in a column means the two devices are literally in series. Everything that's exiting one is entering the other. If you have three wires in a column, if you have three wires in a column, then I'm going to say two things about that. Number one, well, four things. <laughs> Number one, I hope it was on purpose. Like if you ever notice three wires in a column, ask yourself, hold on. Did I really, why are there three wires in that column? And when you look at it, here's what better be the case. If there's three wires sticking out of, you know, three holes occupied in one column, what better be the case is that one of those wires is, is like a trunk of a tree. Like it's like one of those wires is coming, say, I don't know, from the positive terminal of your battery or something. And the other two wires are, are the entering wires of two different devices that you mean to be a choice, right? Like in other words, if you have three wires in one column, they should, first of all, be wires from three separate devices. There's no way that two of those wires should be the two ends of one resistor or the two ends of one light bulb or something. If you do, that's a mistake. That's a short circuit. And in fact, could be dangerous. I mean, it certainly won't work. It certainly won't do what you want it to do. And it might do something harmful. But so first of all, I'm saying, if you've got three wires in a column, they better be from three different devices. And it really better be that one of them, you're thinking in your mind as like an input, right? Or like an entrance, like a trunk of a tree. And the other two are the two branches. The other two are the choice. And the one is the, you know, the way it's going, uh, the way it's entering. So if you, so if you have three wires and you did them deliberately, then that would constitute a parallel. That's a juncture, a junction, right? Three wires would literally be a junction, would be a choice. If you were to draw it in a circuit diagram, it would look like, you know, like a Y, you know, like enter and then exit or exit, right? A choice. And it's very possible if you have three wires that you didn't do them correctly. Like it is harder to do parallel than series in a way. If you have any more than three in one column, I would suggest that at this point with these circuits that we're doing, I mean, this is not a hard and fast rule, but I would suggest if you have any more than three columns in, um, excuse me, three wires in one column, something's wrong. Like it, things might even be working, but they're not working the way that you intended, I would suggest. Because if you have four wires in one column, you're at the best possible thing you might be doing is saying to the electricity, when you hit this junction point, I now want to give you three choices, either go that way or go that way or go that way. And there's never any good reason to do that. 
because you could at least to simplify your life and to follow all the principles that we're trying to learn here, even if you think you want to give them three choices, and I don't think we've even just mentioned a circuit yet, yet where that would be, you still could reduce it to like, first, a choice between these two. And then if you go one possible way, it's a choice between these two. It should always be binary. In other words, everything is either a choice or it's not a choice. And if it's a choice, it's literally two alternatives. So you should... If you see two wires in a column, it's series and it's pro and they should be from two different devices. If you see three, they should be from three different devices and it's parallel. Anything more or anything less, and it's a mistake. I don't know if that helped at all. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, uh, okay, and I know we only have 10 minutes. Um, uh, I'm gonna, okay, risk, I'm gonna move, I don't know if that helped, well, Maybe if there's anybody who hasn't said anything yet at all, maybe, or who wants, but could maybe just even privately chime in, tell me if that's helpful, or if you have any more questions or anything. I don't, well, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that did something. Maybe, maybe. Um, uh, well, actually, oh, yeah, okay, that's all right. I'll take that. Thank you, Rachel. All right, cool. Okay, since I only have nine minutes, I am going to do a little theory here, but I'm not going to make a big, uh, well, you sort of see it on the page here. Well, here, no, actually, oh, here we go. Okay, I'm going to try in nine minutes, and I will respect your time. I'm going to try in nine minutes to relate what you're doing in the lab back to like what's going on actually in the class. Um, and, and here's how. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, good. Qu uh, sure. Good point. Good point. Very good point. Sure. You're right. I'll accept that. No, you're absolutely right. I'm trying to be. Yes. Good point. Good point. Private chat person. Um, okay. So yeah. So I mean, of course, as okay, of course, I have too much to say. My quick summary, just to remind you again, sort of where we were three weeks ago. Like, we have this fundamental interaction, this fundamental action at a distance that exists among, oh, excuse me, that exists between points of charge in the same way that we have a fundamental action at a distance that exists between points of mass, right? What we're saying is that for any two points of charge, for any two bits of electrical charge in the universe, one will exert a force on the other that is directly proportional to the magnitude of each charge and is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, right? Like, just like gravity, we're saying, you got a proton over here, you got an electron over here, they pull on each other automatically. And the more the protons over here, or the more the electrons over here, or the closer they are, the more they pull on each other. And if they're both protons or both electrons, then they push on each other, hence the plus or minus thing, right? That's the, the fundamental idea is this electrostatic force, this interaction that exists between pairs of charge, right? Then we say, and I'm, again, I'm going a little quickly here, but summary, recollection, review. Then we say, you know what? There's this weird thing that this, this force between charges, just like the force between masses, on the one hand is totally happening at a distance. Like it's happening. It doesn't require any touching at all. And it doesn't get messed up by any touching, like, like a proton can pull an electron with nothing in between them, but also even if there is something in between them like wood, they'll still pull on each other. The, the wood might push as well, but they'll still pull on each other and they're not affected by the wood being there. So somehow, 
and they'll pull on each other or push on each other in a way that is determined precisely numerically by how far apart they are. So somehow every charge in the world seems to sort of know how far away and how big every other charge is in the world, right? It seems very strange to us as physicists that somehow bits of charge pull and push on each other in a manner that is continually being updated and adjusted according to how far apart they are and how big they are and, and seems to require no direct physical contact messenger service to be uh, going back and forth between the two and, and, and transmitting this, this quantitative information. So what we say, what, so we have these bits of charge, protons and electrons, and then we say, okay, we don't really know what we're saying here, but just like wave pulses are bits of information that propagate from one source to a receiver, through a medium, right? Just like waves are ripples in something that is rippling. We say there's gotta be something like that going on here. So from now on, instead of believing that protons just, just pull on electrons through empty space, what we say is protons, the moment they exist, they create a field in the space around them. What is the field? The field is very abstract. It's like a medium but it's not a material medium. The field is the presence of all the relevant information describing that proton that exists. Like in other words, this right here is the field caused by one source charge. If capital Q is the, is the source, the charge that's coming along that's gonna pull or push on other charges, we say that capital Q, the minute it exists, it creates a field it plops vectors in effect all around it so that for it, really what it plops down is a vector valued function. It plops down in space everywhere for any given point in space that anybody um, uh, imagines or chooses. At that point in space, there's a certain number of newtons per coulomb and a certain direction um, associated with those newtons per coulomb that represents how much force will be exerted on every coulomb of positive test charge that might ever find itself at that location. So, so the field is the force waiting to happen. The information at every point in space ready to be applied to any second object that might arrive at that point in space. So force is something I do to you. Field is something that I do to space. And then if you come along to that point in space, the field does it to you, right? Okay, so field is force per charge. Force is measured in Newtons. Field is measured in Newtons per Coulomb. That's what this second equation says right here. In three minutes, to, to start to relate this back to the lab, like what does it have to do with the lab? Well, first of all, This may be the last thing we're going to. I know he related V to I to R for you in love, but what are V and I and R? What do they have to do with anything? This is the last, I know we have two minutes. This is the last sheet I'm doing right now, but I think this will put some things in perspective. Okay, uh, two minutes, I'm gonna finish with this. I'm saying, what is current? Current is a, a bit of one dimensional charge density, dq per dx, like a bit of charge per unit length, right? I'm saying if you have a, bit, a line of charge, 
charge per unit length. And you give that line some velocity, length per unit time, right? A current is a, a line of charge with some velocity. So it's, it's not, so current is not just a moving charge. It's not a charge with velocity. And it's not just a line of charge. It's a line of charge with velocity, which means when you think about it this way, when you think of it as coulombs per meter times meters per second, and you think of the meters as canceling out, which is what's happening, then what current really is, is flow. It is, it's, it's not just the motion of a charge, it's continuous flow. What current is, and I'm gonna end with this right now at 1.30, what current is, is dq dt. It's literally the derivative of charge per unit time. It is, imagine you standing at some location in a wire, you standing with a video camera or whatever, you standing there and count at a given point and counting the number of charges of coulombs, the number of electrons, if you like, passing by you per unit time. Like, so you stand there for hundred seconds, you count a million charges. So it's a million charges divided by hundred seconds. So that's 10,000 charges per second. It, and if we convert it to coulombs, say you counted 10,000 coulombs flying by you at a given location per every second of time, then we would call that 10,000 amperes of current. Current is just charge flow per unit time at a given location in a wire. It's a derivative. It is a to be evaluated at a geometric point. I mean, so it's 130, so that's all I'm gonna say for now, hopefully. And then I have to relate you back to voltage. Next class, I'll tell you what voltage is, but you might've seen on the first page, it, it's the current is the derivative of charge. Voltage is the integral of field. If that, that may help very few of you, but that's what it is. So we'll get to that on Monday, but you've been a very good class. I will get your exams back. You'd be very, very, I appreciate oh, thank, Okay, cool. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it. This is hurting your head. No, it's not. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Yes. You guys could, but de definitely, I don't know if you, okay, cool. you should go, but I don't know if you're still there or still listening, but definitely don't come to class next Tuesday if it's, I don't, I don't know if I made any sense on that topic, but uh, I don't know if either of you can hear me right now, but um, oh, I'm stopping the call.